What's up YouTube, Thrift Hunter here with this week's estate sale finds. Had a very good week this week, uh, got a lot of stuff, spent a lot of money, but overall I'm very happy with the amount of quality things I bought this week, so we'll go ahead and get started with this pocket watch that I bought. This was uh, 60 bucks, and I just bought it, you know, without even looking at it, uh, for nice um, full hunter gold filled case pocket watches um, they just tend to be worth a little bit more than the open face ones and it's got this nice chain so I, I didn't even really need to look at it to know that you know 60 bucks is plenty of fine um, so here's the dial it's uh, missing the crystal which is you know pretty common but it says uh, J Herbert Hall Pasadena and it's missing the seconds hand there uh, so it does have some damage, but uh, overall it's a pretty nice looking um, pocket watch with that button closure there. And here's just kind of the inside. It's um, gold filled. The movement, um, I guess I can show you. Let's take a look at that. Is an Illinois watch. 17 Jewel, Illinois. Illinois is like um, probably the best brand of pocket watches that you'll see. I mean, you can find good uh, Elgin's and Waltham's, but the Illinois just tend to always be a little bit more valuable for some reason. Um, this one's a fairly common Illinois. Um, usually you want to look for the railroad grade and the bun specials and those kind in good condition can be worth a lot. But... Um, overall, it's a pretty nice pocket watch. I've got it up for like 150. I think it's worth like, I don't know, around 100 hopefully. So I saw just the movement going for 55 bucks. So it seems to be a better one. So there's that piece. Um, here's some silver bangles that I bought. Um, these are all unmarked. So I think that's why they're a little bit cheaper. So four bucks for this one, which looks like it's got gold plating and silver. It's not marked anywhere, and the little safety catch chain is broken, but that's not a big deal. Four bucks. And then these were, were pretty interesting. Um, this one was eight bucks. Yeah. So it's got this really old stamped design that looks pretty worn. From the, for the most part when you look at it um, in person I guess it's coming up a little bit better on the camera but there's that one and then this one and this one was five bucks typically th this kind of stamping is for really old Native American pieces so I don't know too much about these but these could be like from the 1800s 1850s or something like that I'm pretty sure these are um, pretty dang old but I'm not sure so there's those um, here's a little silver coin that I got for 10 bucks um, they didn't even look at it really I just asked how much and they're like oh 10 bucks and uh, see right there at the bottom one troy ounce 999 fine silver so there's an ounce ounce coin there for uh, 10 bucks so it's below scrap nice piece there um, here's a little depth gauge aqua lung uh, I just sold one of these recently for about $70 or something, and I just saw this one for 5 bucks. So it's a nice orange, you know, vintage look. I think people just wear these just for the style, but I, I think it's still functional. Um, it's set up here to 5, so it should be at 0, I think, but I've seen other ones that have sold where it's been... Uh, a little bit higher than zero so I don't really know if that can be fixed or what the deal is with that but this is, was just with a bunch of other dive gear and I thought the price was pretty cheap 
Um, at that same sale, I got some Oakley sunglasses. Um, you know, I don't really buy this type of stuff that often, but uh, I just asked how much, and they said five bucks. So I was like, okay, well, for five bucks, um, gonna be okay with that. I actually have done pretty well on sunglasses um, recently, so keep an eye out for good good quality ones. But these are uh, Oakley M frames, and this is like their tactical look or whatever. I'm not really sure, but yeah, so those were $5. I looked these up. They go for like um, anywhere from maybe 50 to 100 depending on condition and stuff. So um, yeah, for 5 bucks it was a good deal, and I think they'll sell pretty easily. Just that. Um, let's see. I guess I can dump this out. I don't quite remember what's all in here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Okay, so a baby rattle with no dates on it, so it hasn't been engraved with a little um, celluloid or mother of pearl or something like that. Seven bucks. This is Webb Sterling. Um, these you can get like 25 bucks for. Um, a nice silver turquoise ring. It was $25, which is, I get, I get it. It's like a lot to pay for a ring, but... Um, the turquoise rings just, you can always sell them. So I've never had any issues with any of my turquoise rings getting a good price. So I always buy them because my, my, uh, my, the people who buy from me love, uh, you know, these kind of turquoise rings. So, um, there's that piece. Um, these were probably the best piece I got at the sale with the, some of the Native American stuff. Really like these, um, Zuni inlay butterfly screw back earrings and those were 15 bucks which you know that's why they were still at the sale is because almost nobody will buy earrings for more than like five dollars at sales for the most most part as far as like other dealers but i buy earrings um all the time because i always sell them so those are really nice um here's this piece which is a uh, St. Christopher medal, so it says St. Christopher protect us on that, and then it says on the back it's marked Sterling, who we'll read Sterling, and then I, I don't know if this is a, is this the Air Force logo? So this might, might have been like a World War II, uh, necklace chain, I'm not sure, but this was like three dollars or something, and the chain's not marked, so I'm going to test it, but I think it's silver as well. It's probably the same as this. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, these kind of uh, St. Christopher medals can go for a decent amount of money, so we'll see how we do on that one. Um, and the reason why I think that's Air Force as well is because I got this, um, yeah, it's the same logo, right? Yeah, it is. So that's cool that this, I didn't realize that that was uh, Air Force before. But this says U.S. Air Force on there, and it's uh, Mark Sterling on the clasp here. So you have to spread it apart, check it. It says Sterling. And it's got somebody's name there, and uh, I guess their serial number. It's not going to focus, but anyway. This was 10 bucks, and uh, it was it's 50 grams, and these go for about $50. So that's a nice piece there. Um, this piece was just like jumped out to me. Um, this is a nice like 1880s, I think. Uh, I think it's Chinese, possibly Chinese enamel little brooch with some little cultured pearls on there. And it's marked sterling here with an older style clasp. Yeah, in great condition. Um, yeah, I'll sell that very quickly I can imagine um, here's a little pearl tie tack that I bought and it has no markings I'm pretty sure it's silver and I have a suspicion that it could be Mikamoto but um, I'm not sure and you'll find out later why because I bought some other pearls today or yesterday and then I got this piece um, just because it was interesting 
Um, so there's a couple things. I still have to test this piece. I think it may be silver. Um, but one of the things I looked at first was the bail. So you can see it's soldered over and it's kind of a nicer bail. I don't know if that really makes too much sense, but you can see how it's been nicely soldered. It has no markings on this pendant. So this, uh, it's not magnetic, so I did check that. Um, so yeah, it could be silver, but then there's this clasp on this chain which has a little marking on the clasp there that I can't read even with a loop and then on one side of the tag here um, at the bottom it's marked Italy and the way that the Italy is marked sorry I can't really get that great of a close-up of that but maybe you guys can see it a little bit the way that the Italy is stamped doesn't look like silver it looks like gold so I'm thinking that possibly this chain could be gold and maybe this is silver or something like that because it looks like on this I can maybe see a little bit of wear through on the plating and it, it doesn't look like gold to me so um, yeah we'll test that later okay so here's the next little grouping of stuff that I bought at one sale that I went really far to. This was on a Wednesday, so it wasn't, uh, you know, a normal sale day. Um, and they said they had a lot of jewelry and gold and stuff, and I could see from the pictures that it looked okay. Um, but when I got there, it was really not that great. Um, but this is what I did buy. And I, you know, I don't think there's anything, like, super special here, but I don't know. It's interesting stuff. It's good, you know, after you go... For a Wednesday sale, it was fine. Um, at least I came home with something, I guess. Um, so this was um, $20 here. This is a nice pearl sterling necklace. Um, I just bought it because I like the, the clasp. If you can see here, it's got a safety latch. And a really thick little tongue piece here. And it just was giving me some signs of quality. It's marked sterling there. And, uh, you know, the pearls aren't that great. And there's, like, little plastic beads in there. But for $20, you know, it's an okay piece. Um, here's a little gold-filled. It says uh, United States Army. It was kind of neat for $3. It's nothing, you know, crazy. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, I bought these for $3, which I've seen this design before, but it does look like I'm missing a fish. So that was a little disappointing. This one has four, this one has three, so it doesn't really match. But that would be a really nice set if it was matching, so I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Right here you can see it's where it's missing the other one. So I don't know what I'm going to do with those. We'll see. Um, this was a really neat set that I bought. Uh, I'm not sure the price on this. Like 8 bucks maybe. And uh, yeah, two nice little brass like geisha girl with some... This is like cut steel. And the cut steel stuff is usually a little bit older. Um, there was cut steel in like the 1890s, and then there was also cut steel, I believe, during World War II. So because I found some other military things, I'm going to guess this is like a World War II era. And I think it's a like a belt buckle or a sash buckle. And I've got a set of two of them. I did some research, and I was able to find some similar... Where people are asking like 60 65 bucks for one set so we'll see how it goes on those i mean i don't know i think they're nice but sometimes you never know here's one of these little hieroglyphic things um good good thing to look out for i think this one's silver but they do come in gold too so um i have to test this one but look out for these little things i think the gold ones go for like 125 bucks or something 
Um, so, yeah, I always look out for those. I'm not sure who made them. I think they're made in Israel or something. Um, for $8, nice little stamped Native American sterling earrings. These ones don't have backs. Not that big of a deal. I think I have some backs. Um, these I sell pretty consistently. $25 to $30, $35 sometimes. Um, so I bought actually two pairs of those. There's this pair as well. And these ones do have backings, so that makes it a little bit nicer. Eight bucks, not the greatest. I got this little um, set of 14 karat pearl earrings. Uh, no backings as well for two dollars. I mean, what are you gonna do? It's not that bad. I do have a couple pairs of these now. I think I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. We'll see. Um, let's see. Got this necklace here uh, let me zoom out a little bit so this little beaded necklace this was ten dollars um, nothing great basically she told me that this was given to the guy um, in Africa when he was doing doctors without borders is what I was told and um, these little black pieces here are actually pieces of copper cabling which is kind of interesting, so it's kind of like a repurposing of some cabling to make these beaded necklaces. And, you know, I don't think there's anything really in the materials here. Uh, I just think I like the design of it. It's different, and it's kind of funky to where um, I just think I'll be able to sell it. Maybe not for much, but it's just interesting, and it looks nice. So that's what I kind of like to tell people is it, do, it doesn't matter what the materials are if it looks nice it looks nice so um we'll see how we do on that piece and the best thing i got from that little sale i think was these two little enamel um fish i think they're stripers striper bass or something like that um or i don't know what some kind of striped fish okay um, but these I think are sterling and they're enamel and then they're in really, really great condition on both sides. So these were, uh, two or three dollars and I think they could be worth, I don't know, $45 maybe, um, maybe not, maybe 30, but either way, they're going to be worth something. Um, really cool, unique, uh, set of earrings there. So here's a piece that I bought this morning at garage sales that I just wanted to show you briefly. Um, this is like a mini arcade game of Centipede. So it's, uh, yeah, it's called, um, what is it called? Retrocade or something? Uh, Replicade. So I'm trying to do this one handed. See it kind of re uh, replicated centipede. This is made by New Wave Toys, and uh, I got this at a garage sale for 15 bucks. It's like brand new. Um, I've got like the plastic packaging, the cord, everything. She said it's working. Um, these sell for about a hundred dollars, um, and I think I'll get that pretty easily. So it's a cool little piece that I picked up today. Okay, so next up is all of my silver and a little bit more jewelry. Um, some of it was cheap and some of it was expensive, and I'll kind of show you what I bought and why I bought it. And um, yeah, overall it's pretty good. So this piece was $10. I just saw this sitting on the shelf. Um, when you look at it, just right away it doesn't look like anything. Um, you know, you see these cups all the time and they're, they're always plated. But uh, I just decided to check, you know, and this one has an inscription. It's just like a, a christening cup, I guess. So it's got the born date and then the christen date. But I turned this one over, and it still doesn't look like much. But it says sterling right there. So this whole cup is sterling, and it's 10 bucks, and it's thick. Look at how thick the walls are on this thing. So this weighs 150 something grams. So nice heavy piece there. So once I saw this piece for 10 bucks, like 
um, that's this obvious. Like I always tell you guys, like when it's this easy, right? I mean, anyone can walk up and be like, oh, okay, it's Sterling. Like you just look at the bottom. It should be for an estate sale company, that should be a 101 type of thing that you should know. And for, you know, this to slip by, I, I figured, well, there's probably more. Usually when you see something like this big sterling piece priced really cheap, there's usually more. So I checked around and I did find another piece. Um, I checked everything and there was a lot more silver plate, but not, not any more sterling than this. But this piece as well just kind of caught my eye. It looked kind of nice. You see the color. There's no uh, blue-green, so when it's tarnished like this, yeah, it was tarnished black, and silver plate would be blue-green. So I turned it over, and sure enough, there's the hallmarks. So, obviously why they missed it probably is English hallmarks. Not everybody here knows English hallmarks. Um, but that lion mark means sterling. I haven't looked up the date, but I imagine it's 1880s, 1890s, 1900s, something like that. Haven't looked up the maker either, WBJ, um, the little, I don't know. I'll look it up. But, uh, yeah, nice little piece. Um, footed sterling with the nice shell sides. I mean, it's a great piece for, do I still have it on there? Yeah, $2.00. So this weighs 201 grams. Nice heavy piece. So between those two silver pieces, I made out pretty well. Actually kind of saved the uh, the haul, I guess. Uh, those pieces. So there's that. And then uh, moving on to a different sale where I bought some more silver stuff. But this stuff was all um, at scrap price, basically. So... I ended up paying scrap for a couple of pieces that I thought were really nice and really good quality. So typically I try not to buy things unless it's less than scrap because it's very, very hard to sell things for more than scrap most of the time. Um, but I just thought a couple of these pieces were a little exceptional. So anyway, big giant meat serving fork. This one is 800 silver. 800 silver and it's marked Jean Koch on there and uh, yeah this was a little bit cheaper because it was 800 so she gave me a little bit better price um, I think this was 50 bucks and it weighs about 150 grams so I picked up that piece and then I picked up this piece which you can see, I think, pretty clearly the quality of this. Um, but it wasn't cheap. So this is 400 grams, and I paid $200 for it, 50 cents a gram, which is maybe right at scrap or a little bit over scrap um, right now. But I just thought the quality and how old it was and the condition was really good. And then it's, uh, it's a Reed and Barton piece. Sterling. It's from 1948, and uh, yeah, I just thought, I don't know, I, I drove really, really far to this sale as well, and it was the only really good sale for that day, and they had a bunch of silver. You've got to try and buy some of it, you know, I mean, while you're there, if you're seeing this kind of quality, you just got to go for it. So I bought this piece. We'll see what happens. Um, Reed and Barton's a good name brand. They had more of these more like this. They had a, a Wallace Grand Baroque bowl. They had um, another, I don't know, whiting or something bowl. And uh, I didn't buy those because I didn't want to get too out of hand with how much I bought. So I just bought the pieces that I thought were absolutely the best ones at the sale. So that's, that's what I had to go for. So I um, went for this piece. Um, here's a piece that someone put back because they were arguing with her about the price um, but this was 25 bucks it's a you know weighted sterling compote you can get about 40 45 bucks 40 bucks plus shipping no problem it's got a nice design good condition um, so I bought this this is the kind of stuff that you can you know 
kind of sit on if you need to and wait for silver prices to go up a little bit and then people will buy it. Um, but here's the main ones that I bought that I thought were um, probably going to be a safe bet. So these are these really nice silver sugar and creamer set with just flower design all the way around. It's nice heavy detail pieces. Um, I saw these in the pictures. Well, I saw like one of them. I think I saw this in the pictures and I didn't see this. Um, so when she said 50 cents a gram for anything, I was like, I mean, these are really good quality for, for scrap price, you know. So I took a chance on these. Um, this one was like maybe $150. And then this one was like 70. So I think I have 220 into these. And it's like 340, 50 grams. I don't know. Something like that. And yeah, so I bought these. I just thought the quality was really, really good. They're Mark Sterling on the bottom. They're made by Whiting Manufacturing Company. And they're from about 1890, 1900. So I bought those pieces. Let me know what you think in the comments. You know, would you buy this at scrap? Or would you only buy it if it was less than scrap? Let me know. I've got these up for 500 bucks, And uh, we'll see what happens with them. Alright, last few pieces here. Um, this was from the same sale where I got some of the cheaper... Um, silver and this was the piece that I saw in the pictures um, I saw the Mikamoto case but from the pictures you couldn't see the uh, labels and tags here um, so I figured you know it was probably likely that they had some other pearls in a Mikamoto case is what I was thinking um, I was thinking that they probably you know just put some junky uh, culture pearls in the case to make it look nice um, but you know, to my surprise, when I got there, um, it was real. So this was like the first thing I went for. And I thought there was a lot of other people that were there for jewelry that were going straight for the jewelry. And I really thought that this is what they were going for because I saw this and this was like the nicest piece I could see. And uh, yeah, no one, <clears throat> no one really went for it. So I just went right for it, grabbed it, said I'll take it. Um, the price on it was... Um, hundred seventy five dollars so as soon as I saw that I was like I'll take it because I, I looked these up and depending on it depends on the length and the size of the pearls obviously um, but uh, this being with the case with the tags with everything and just how it looked I mean I just was 175 bucks I took it right away because I figured when I did some research that these were gonna be minimum two hundred dollars with uh, you know with the smallest pearls you could you can get but this actually turned out to be pretty good and then I also bought a ring which is also a Mikamoto ring um, <clears throat> but I want to talk about the necklace first so it's got the original wax seal Mikamoto wax seal Let's see you see it will it focus it's kinda hard to see but there's the M and the clamshell there and the original little hang tag here and uh, yeah so I just looked at it really quickly and it's it's a silver clasp it's marked silver on the back and then the Mikamoto mark is right here on the clasp really small marked right there on the ear and uh, just marked silver on the back but this is um, really nice quality pearls obviously Mikamoto big big name brand um, yeah uh, these are about six millimeter pearls all continuous the same this is about 22 inches long which is a really really nice long length which makes it worth a lot more 
than if it was like a 16 inch or something. Um, so the, the necklace, I'm going to put something like $500 on it, I think. I saw one almost identical that was 22 inches, 21 inches long with the same exact clasp that was graduated from like 3.5 millimeter to 7 millimeter that went for $510 with the case. Um, it didn't have the hang tags, which I think helps a little bit. Um, so yeah, really, really nice score on those pearls. Absolutely gorgeous, um, high quality best you can get so these I'll have no problem whatsoever selling obviously and then just this three pearl ring they wanted 75 bucks for it and I talked to the lady because they were being I was trying to buy they had some other gold <clears throat> and I was trying to buy stuff from them but they were not doing any deals they said we're firm on the first day you know but I just went up to her really nicely I said hey look I'm buying um, the pearls for 175 dollars this ring kind of goes with it, um, you know. I'd like to, I'd like to pay fifty for the ring because I looked up the rings and they were going for like seventy-five to one hundred and fifty, something like that. So for seventy-five bucks, I was like, eh. I was like, can we do a little bit better? And she's like, look, since you're buying a lot, I'll do sixty. And I was like, all right, fine, that, that's fair. If they come down a little bit, that means all the difference. I've been really trying to do that a lot more now since margins are really tight on ebay that um you know getting it down 15 bucks means all the difference so um she was like just you know don't say anything but i'll do 60 i'm like all right cool so i got this nice ring for 60 um i was able to find only one completed listing of this exact ring that went for 250 dollars um but that had the original ring box so i don't know exactly how much this will go for but this is silver and pearl and it's mark mikamoto on the inside so nice little set there i don't know if i'm going to sell these together or separate i think i'm going to sell them separately because they do have a little bit different of a look they're not really a pair so um yeah there's the mikamoto pearls i bought really excited about those um let me grab one little thing really quickly here go grab it i did buy this little um, Chanel piece here, this is a bath powder, number five, and it smells, it's going to make me sneeze, but I just picked this up. It was, uh, I don't know, oh, $5 on there, and then I opened it up, and I just saw this nice little powder thing, and I'm trying to do this, but there's the powder and it looks basically brand new I mean it's completely full and looks oh it's very smelly but anyway Chanel stuff just no matter what it is Chanel stuff sells it's just I don't know people like Chanel stuff so I looked these up really quick on my phone, and it looks like they go for like eighty to a hundred dollars in this kind of condition. Um, brand new, they go for like two hundred. So when I was seeing solds for eighty, ninety, a hundred dollars with not even really as in good of condition, um, I picked it up. So it's not that nice. I mean, it's used or like you know opened bath stuff, which is a little weird, but Chanel stuff just has a following that's like insane they had a bunch of other chanel perfumes that were probably like half full or something for a few dollars each that i didn't buy just because they i don't know i'm only gonna buy the perfumes if they're big sizes and they're full or they're brand new in the package or something i really don't like to mess with this kind of stuff um but i did buy this one piece so yeah there's that all right guys last piece here this was the greatest uh, piece that I found this week, is this clock. So, went to a sale after all the other sales, probably about 10 o'clock. So, you know, it's been open for maybe two hours. Uh, I saw a line of about 40 people checking out, buying stuff. And I walked through the house, and um, pretty much everything was gone. I mean, almost everything was sold. There wasn't really much left. 
and this was a just a huge huge estate like mansion with two it had a guest house and a regular house and a pool spot and um yeah just cra- like really really high and like millions and millions of dollars uh place so i wasn't really finding anything i was just kind of cruising around and they had a big garage like a i don't know like a 15 foot tall garage it was like a uh, almost like a hangar, but that was their garage, so, um, and just on one of the desks that they had was this clock, and, you know, at first glance, it didn't really seem like much to me, it just kind of seemed like a, you know, junky Chinese clock or something, it didn't look like much to me, but I, I just saw it, and then I saw the price tag, of 35 bucks then I just kind of started looking at it then I went to pick it up and uh, this thing weighs like 10 pounds and I was like whoa okay this is solid brass this clock 35 bucks so immediately I'm already like I'm gonna buy it right for 35 bucks solid brass I mean that's crazy and then I turned it around and saw this so one of the things that i saw right away was swiss made so now it's a swiss made clock of solid brass i'm like okay cool you know i'll take it and then i keep looking it says fabergé mystery clock franklin mint 1988 so, you know, I'm already going to buy it, um, but I do look it up on my phone really quick. And I start seeing some sold listings for around $800. So, yeah, this is a really, really nice clock. I wanted to look it up because the Franklin Mint stuff can sometimes be worthless and then sometimes be worth a lot. So, once I saw the Franklin Mint part, because, like, it says Fabergé, but I know it's not Fabergé, Fabergé. Like, it's not made by the House of Fabergé. It doesn't say made in France, you know? It's not, like, uh, it's just not Fabergé. It's Franklin Mint, right, that manufactured this clock. It's obviously, like, a Fabergé design or something like that. Um, But, yeah, anyway, this clock's worth about $800, and I paid 35 bucks for it. Um... I have to test it. It's a battery op clock. So I'll show you the bottom here. So here's the bottom. Um, It'll focus. There you go. So we've got set, time set, on off, switch, and then a little knob here for setting the hands. And uh, this is the battery cover. So I have to. Um, change the batteries in that and test it to see if it works but um, one of the big things about this one is that it has all the pearls so all these little pearls all around are all there so that's um, pretty important there's pearls on the side there's pearls for all the hour markers and uh, this one has all the pearls, and the condition is basically mint. I mean, I would say this thing's pristine. Um, it doesn't have the original case, which hurts it a little tiny bit. But there was one that sold for 735, not working. One sold for 800 with some missing pearls. So uh, I think I'll put about a thousand dollars on this, um, and kind of see what happens. And the reason why it's called a mystery clock is the way that the the dial is set up. So you can't see how it's got a, it looks like it has nothing around it to move the hands. Like it's just floating there. There's actually a a piece of acrylic in between the the glass. So there's glass and then there's like a little thin piece of acrylic that goes through the center of that, um, those hands that hooks up to a gear drive on the outside of this bezel that will turn that piece of plexiglass that will turn the hands so it's really kind of a neat 
a uh, neat little piece. So that was my big score this week that really came in at a good time. I mean, I was already happy with the silver and the Mikamoto pearls and the pocket watch and stuff that I got. Um, I was already great, and this was just kind of a, a sale that was close by that I thought I'd swing by and check out just because it was close, and I ended up stumbling upon a little piece of treasure there. So um, really great week. Uh, I've got a lot of work to do. I'm going to get busy listing all this stuff. And uh, if you like this video, please leave me a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button for me if you could. Um, I'd really appreciate it, and thanks for watching.